Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, thanks again, everybody, for taking time out of your Wednesday to join us. I'm Matt Rubinoff. I direct the Center for Student Opportunity, and I'm joined uh, today by Krista D'Amelio, who uh, oversees our relationships with college and university partners. So we're really excited to uh, introduce uh, our work on behalf of first-generation college students uh, with you today and, and hope that we will be inviting uh, many of you uh, into our, our partnership uh, in the near future. Uh, if you'd bear with me through a, a short um, and a little bit cheesy of an introduction, um, we will get started. Uh, so as I think we can all agree, there's something special about being the first, uh, whether it's the first in flight, the first man on the moon, the first African-American president, first kisses, first impression, first place. Slides are moving a little bit slow, but uh, I think you get the point. Uh, well, we think there's also something special about being the first in your family to attend and graduate from college. 30% of students enrolled in post-secondary institutions today are first-generation college students. 24% are both low-income and first-gen. That's about 4.5 million students nationwide. But 89% of these students, or 9 out of every 10, will not earn a bachelor's degree by age 24. The issue is not so much that would-be first-generation college students lack the motivation or qualification for college, but more so that they lack access to good information and support to navigate the college process and more importantly, to access the colleges and universities that are most committed to their success. We know that so many four-year colleges and universities, like the ones you represent, care about first-gen students, can be accessible and affordable options for them, and certainly give students the best shot at being successful in and out of the classroom and graduating. But the challenge is making sure that the students and those who are, who are supporting them really believe it. All too often, even high-achieving, motivated students are choosing post-secondary options that aren't the most conducive to their success, uh, simply because that's what they believe to be their only realistic, attainable, and affordable option. So our goal, first and foremost, is to help aspiring first-gen students take a more glass-half-full approach to their college search and to realize that the opportunity for college does exist for them, particularly at four-year residential schools that have campus programs and support services to help them succeed academically, socially, and financially. Since 2006, our organization, Center for Student Opportunity, has created tools to help first-gens plan for and research college and we've partnered with colleges and universities to promote and strengthen your efforts on behalf of first-gen college students. Uh, to date, we've, uh, we've partnered with around 180 institutions, something we're really proud of, um, but uh, forever continuing to, to work to grow and expand. Uh, we started our programming with a, a college search website uh, called CSO College Center, and a few years later published a college guidebook called the College Access and Opportunity Guide. Over the years, we, we learned two things loud and clear. One is that the popular college search websites and guidebooks just aren't cutting it for first-generation college students. And two, as much as well-meaning counselors, teachers, and mentors want to help, at the end of the day, students respond most to their peers to motivate them in their pursuit of college. So in 2012, as we began to plan for updating our online presence and program, it, it began a rebranding process of source for us. We conceived what has become the I'm First Project, an online community designed to celebrate first-generation college students and help the next generation of students who will be first-gen to plan for college and research the colleges and universities that care about students like them. After a year of beta development with the help of the College Knowledge Challenge, a Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation grant competition that we won last year, uh, we officially launched I'm First uh, last fall. We've had some early success and received a, a warm reception from students, schools, 
youth serving organizations and media across the country. A uh, feature story about us aired nationally on NPR's Mar Marketplace Morning Report. We've done interviews with public radio stations in a number of different states. We've been covered in the Chronicle of Higher Education, Inside Higher Ed, USA Today, and more. Uh, First Lady Michelle Obama shared her I'm First story with our campaign uh, in February, ahead of launching the White House's Reach Higher initiative earlier this month. And we were invited to the Clinton Global Initiative University Conference in March. Uh, so a lot of exciting things uh, have been happening. Uh, this past year, with uh, with our recent successes and, and continued growth, we've we've made some changes to our college partnership program, and we're now inviting institutions who share our commitment to supporting first generation college students to apply to become part of our growing community of college partners. <clears throat> Excuse me. We believe strongly that a high tide raises all boats, and and that the more colleges that support our mission and participate in our program the stronger our collective voice will be to demonstrate that the opportunity for college does exist for first gen. And that's really a driving principle we want our college partners to share. And that in and of itself should be a compelling reason to join us. But at the same time, our programs do deliver real value and benefits for participating institutions. We help college partners reach prospective students, promote and strengthen their efforts on behalf of first generation college students, and share and build upon best practices for successfully recruiting and retaining first-gen students on your campuses. Through the college partner application process, we'll have a chance to learn more about your institution's commitment to first-gen students, and you'll have the opportunity to learn more about the ins and outs of our program and to ask questions. Uh, but to help you out as you consider completing the application for partnership, uh, we'd like to give you a, a cursory overview of our program and the major benefits and services of partnership. Uh, so with that, I will turn it over to Krista, um, who will take you guys the rest of the way. Thank you, Matt, and thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, as Matt mentioned earlier, we are in partnership with about 180 college partner institutions across the United States. But who exactly are these college partners? Well, they tend to be four-year residential colleges and universities that share our commitment to supporting first-generation college students. They are generally characterized as institutions with above-average retention and graduation rates and a clear commitment to first-generation college students. Our college partners, we pride, take pride in them forming a strong network of institutions that are similarly committed to supporting first-gens not only to, but through college. And through our programs, our college partners are able to share and learn best practices for successfully recruiting and retaining first-gen students. Our college partners are able to reach prospective first-gen students through our program, and they're able to promote and strengthen their institution's efforts on behalf of first-generation college students. And as a nonprofit organization, uh, Matt mentioned we do ask for you to apply. But as a nonprofit, we do ask our college partners to fulfill an annual uh, partnership contribution to help sustain and grow our program. Now, part of the I'm First community is a storytelling project. It's inspired and modeled after the It Gets Better uh, project. And it's where we're collecting YouTube video stories from first generation college students and graduates from across the country. And we even have some superstar first gens, as we like to call them, such as First Lady Michelle Obama who have committed to supporting first gens, who are first gens themselves, and are sharing their stories. We even have institution presidents, such as the president of the University of Pennsylvania, Amy Gutman, as you can see in the bottom right-hand corner, alongside students and other graduates, faculty, and staff across the United States who are sharing their story. And together, these stories, we hope, will inspire and offer advice to the next generation of students who will be first. And creating a video is very easy to do. You can find some tips and instructions on our website, and anyone can record a video with their webcam or smartphone, and you simply upload it to YouTube and send us the link through your share your story form that you see on the left-hand side to add it to the project. I encourage you all after the webinar to, to check it out, www.imfirst.org, and see what other individuals and institutions have done to get a deeper sense of this project.
So through our programs, college partners are able to directly reach prospective students while promoting and strengthening their institution's efforts on behalf of first-generation college students. And this is achieved through the web application we have built that you can see here. Our partners are able to manage the benefits of partnerships directly through the college, uh, college Partner Dashboard. And I will get into more details about the features of the College Partner Dashboard as I move through the presentation. But I'm First is also a college search tool designed with first gens in mind. Our directory of college and university profiles help students answer the question, what's in it for me as a first gen college student? And our college directory features all 180 of our current college partners. But as a partner, you're given a college partner profile on imfirst.org that you're able to manage with your imfirst user account that logs you into the dashboard. And we like to focus the college profile on important campus programs and opportunities for first-generation students. Do you offer fly-in programs for prospective students? Do you have a summer bridge program for incoming students? Or peer mentoring on campus to help these students persist to graduation? These are all the things that we like to highlight under programs supporting first-gen college students that help our students answer that question, what's in it for me as a first-gen college student? Alongside all of those programs and opportunities highlighted in the profile, we focus on facts and figures. You can see some of them on the left-hand side. The facts and figures on the college profile highlight important student diversity, student success, affordability, and admissions metrics, which you can see are the tabs in blue across the top portion of the profile. But what's really unique about our profile, alongside highlighting those colleges and, and uh, college and opportunities that you provide on campus, but students can tell you that they're interested and want and share uh, all of this information with their friends on social media. And that green I'm interested button that you see underneath uh, the title of Bucknell University helps our students connect to you to show that they're interest. Similarly, the Facebook sharing and the Twitter sharing features that you see in the right top corner also allow these mechanisms to occur. But moreover, alongside students who specifically show interest in you, as a full college partner, you're given direct access to the thousands of motivated first-generation college-bound students on the site and the information that they provide within their I'm First profile, which is what you see here. The information that's included upon a student signing in is their first and last name, their email, their zip code, their birth date, their gender, the name of their high school, their high school graduation year, and lastly, their interests of areas to study. Other self-reported information that you see here is their extracurriculars and activities, work experience, honors and awards, what rank they are, their high school GPA, their SAT scores and ACT scores, as well as self-reported home address, telephone number, ethnicity, and annual household income. And over the few years here at CSO, we've learned how important it is for our college partners to form relationships with community-based organizations and college access programs. So full college partners are given direct access to a national database of college access programs and community-based organizations on I'm First, and that's what you see here. Currently, we have over 2,500 of these organizations, and we're excited that this number is still growing. It has grown to what we believe is the largest comprehensible directory of community-based organizations and college access programs. And we're excited to be able to provide this to you online through I'm First because previously this was given offline to our partners. But now you have immediate access to it at any time through your user account through the I'm First dashboard. This database allows for partners to go beyond just high school visits during recruitment and connect with organizations serving thousands of youth. We had a college partner, the United States Naval Academy, use this organization to connect with students and their counselors in Louisiana. They searched for all of the organizations in Louisiana and invited them and flew them to an open house on their campus. And from there, they were able to increase their student population of students 
represented from the state of Louisiana. And that's just one example of the creative ways that our college partners are utilizing this directory for them. And we are working to get these community-based organizations and other youth-serving organizations to fully build out their profiles. And what you see here with Act 6 Leadership and Scholarship Initiative is what a comprehensive profile looks like. Our directory also includes TRIO programs and pre, uh, college prep charter schools. And our organization directory has been built through our collaboration and partnerships with associations such as the National College Access Network and National Partnership for Educational Access. And for students and their supporters, I'm First is also a go-to place to get answers to questions about college. And every year, we're able to award scholarships to first-generation college students who, in turn, are able to chronicle their college experiences and give advice on the I'm First blog. And what's really unique about this is being able to see students' experiences change and being able to document that for all four years. So this year, we'll uh, be able to award eight new scholarships to first-generation students who are matriculating into one of our college partner institutions. And the scholarship is at a level of $1,000, which is renewable for all four years. And the other aspect uh, that's unique about the scholarship is that these students in turn become bloggers, as I previously mentioned. So to date, we have 32 bloggers who have received a scholarship for I'm First, who are continuing to document their experiences, offer advice, and connect with the next generation of students who will be first through this. So it's another cool way to document that first-gen experience and connect our students together. But alongside the online tools and resources we provide on imfirst.org, every year we publish and distribute the I'm First Guide to College. This is a unique college guidebook designed to help first-generation college students make their college dreams a reality. And unlike typical college guidebooks, CSO's I'm First Guide to College features programs and resources the colleges offer in support of their first-gen students which connects to the same concept when we built out your web profile, highlighting those programs and resources that you offer to, the, to support first-gen students. So students, their families, and high school counselors find full descriptions of resources they need most, including great articles and interactive worksheets to help our students and the supporters properly plan and prepare for college from the very beginning of researching best fit institutions to completing the application. And counselors particularly like these worksheets because they're able to rip them out and copy them and disseminate them to their students, and then go back and sit down and go through it, almost like a study guide. Before our college partners, we feature your college partner profiles also in the guide that highlight the important campus programs and opportunities for first gen alongside those fact facts and relative contact information. And since its first publication in 2008, CSO has distributed over 20,000 copies nationwide. And every year, our college partners help sponsor a distribution of a few thousand copies to any high school, community-based organization, and youth-serving organization of your choice. And as we keep alluding to, a big aspect of partnership is being included in this community of like-minded institutions that share in our commitment to support First Gen. So added benefits of partnership and being included in our community of college partners include promotion and I'm First e-newsletters, which reach about 40,000 students, counselors, and college access providers nationwide. We revamp this monthly newsletter to highlight those opportunities for first-gen students on your campus. And it's another way to connect our community of college partners together. And you can see who is providing similar services uh, supporting first-gen. We also offer regular based best practice webinars, which engage our community of college partners to share successful recruitment 
and retention tactics for first-gen college students. Previous topics, uh, they, they have always been partner-driven and have included things such as the power of near-peer mentoring and how to work with community-based organizations. And we are aiming to expand this effort further by incorporating a series of white papers based upon our webinar topics. And we survey our college partners to discover what topics are of interest for you, what would you like to hear about, and then to see uh, who in, in our college partner community would like to serve as, this, uh, as a panelist for these uh, best practice webinars. So it's another unique way to connect you all together. Our partners, most recently, have been participating in Google uh, Plus Hangouts, hosted for students. And these topics may range from overall admissions to college applications to what is financial aid. And it's another unique way for our college partners to reach out to these uh, population of first-gen students and connect together. And as our college partner community grows, we're continuing to look at ways to facilitate communication between you and other college partners throughout the year on a continuous basis. So recently, we were excited to implement a college partner listserv, which was powered by Google Groups. And we're calling it the College Partner Exchange. And this community is an outlet for our college partners to share questions, ideas, and best practices to strengthen your outreach, your recruitment, and your retention efforts on behalf of first-gen college students. So as Matt alluded to in our introduction, we are inviting colleges and universities that share our commitment to supporting first-generation students to apply for inclusion in our community of college partners. Right now, we are accepting applications through May 31st to begin partnership July 1. But as a little side note and an added bonus uh, for all of those who have joined our webinar today, we are extending this deadline to be Friday, June 13th. But we're still encouraging you to submit the application as soon as possible. Uh, but if you still need more time, we're happy to extend that deadline for you until Friday, June 13th. Uh, you can apply directly online, which you see in, with that link there, but I'm happy to follow up with you all who have been in attendance and email you that link directly. And the application is brief. Um, we have a few questions uh, to have you, uh, have you fill out based uh, to explain a little bit more about your school of mission and history, um, relevant retention and graduation data, uh, and, of course, those campus programs that support first-generation college students and or all uh, traditionally underserved students. And after we receive your application, we want to connect with you by phone. And this is simply to review the information uh, in more depth that you've provided within the application, as well as give you a chance to ask any questions that you have about I'm First. And typically, after the phone conversation occurs, um, we will notify you of your of approval into partnership within five days. After you've been approved, we simply ask you to sign a college partner agreement to initiate partnership. And I will be your main point of contact to help you get fully integrated uh, to the user account and, and help you build out your profile on I'm First. So as you've heard and know, first gens overcome tremendous obstacles to make it to and through college. But with I'm First, those hurdles are made a little lower. And so we're sharing stories that tell hopeful first gen college students that their college dreams are possible. We're arming them with the tools to find colleges and get into colleges that will actually support them to graduation. And so we believe that it's time to celebrate first-gen stories and to help build the next generation of students who can follow in their first steps. And we hope that you will all be able to join us. And so at this time, we have about 30 minutes left, and we are happy to entertain any questions that you may have. You can simply submit them through the question box or through the chat box, whichever is convenient. We have a question about uh, current partners who, who uh, have to, whether or not they have to participate in the application process. If you are current uh, partners, we do not ask you to fill out an application. Uh, we work separately with you to renew your partnership, and I'm happy to uh, get on board with you uh, later to explain that process. So 
other typical questions we receive are, how do students find out about I'm First? And that's a great question. We don't purchase names. Our students come to us, and they willingly sign up and want to use I'm First. It's very grassroots in style, but we primarily have relationships with high school guidance counselors, CBOs, other college access programs across the US that help us jumpstart providing this information to students, alongside our other networking efforts of connecting students together, word of mouth, email, our blog, uh, social media tools. But primarily our relationships um, with those high school guidance counselors and CBOs across the United States. But our college partners are also helping us find students. So when you're going on those recruitment travels and you're connecting with students or community-based organizations that you know serve first gen, uh, you are providing the information that you are in partnership with us, that you support first gens, and here's an additional tool as well that you can sign up to. And then you can have those students directly connect to your profile online uh, to find out more and you can achieve their contact information. We have another question about our community-based organization and how do you, uh, is it possible to get a spreadsheet of names and addresses? We uh, are excited that we're able to integrate an exploring feature online of uh, the CBOs and organizations as well as students that you want to connect with. And so when you're in the community-based organization directory and you go through a search of different organizations that you want to connect with, by saving those organizations, we have built a tool in the dashboard that allows you to go back and then export information into Excel. And so the information that is provided in the profiles are completely exportable for you into an Excel sheet to use at your convenience. We have another question about uh, the typical cost to be a partner. Um, as we mentioned, we are a nonprofit organization, and so the contributions that our partners provide us really help us do the work that we do. We have two levels of partnership. One is at the associate level, and one is at the full level. At the associate level partnership, we ask for a recommended contribution of $1,500 for the year. And at the full level of partnership, we ask for a typical contribution of $2,800 for the year. We also do offer multi-year partnerships, which um, give a, a great break in the contribution price. And I'm happy to follow up with more information. We have another question about the difference between associate and full membership. Basically, the way I like to explain it is the associate level partnership is that full marketing and promotional uh, relationship. You're given your web profile online, you're featured in the guide book that gets printed, um, and you're able to connect to students who specifically show interest in you. But at the full level, while you get the promotional tools, you also gain access to our entire database of student users. You gain access to the community-based organization directory, which has those 2,500-plus organizations online for you. You get to sponsor the distribution of 25 copies of the guidebook. You get promoted in the Opportunity Knox newsletter, which is, reaches um, 40,000 students, counselors, and different supporters across the United States. And both are a part of our community. Um, and so the best practices and the listserv is available to both. I'll add to that, Krista, that um, in the application, uh, as well as in our uh, informational brochure, uh, if you guys haven't uh, had a chance to look at either of those documents yet, uh, there's a, a matrix, a, a partnership level matrix that, that very clearly delineates what uh, the benefits and services of partnership uh, at, at the associate versus full level uh, entail. Um, so it's very clearly broken down. Uh, there, um, but also through the, um, the the phone interview process after we receive your application, we'll be able to talk uh, with you uh, in more depth about uh, the different options if you're still uh, deciding. We 
We have another question coming in about the number of students in our database and if you're able to find them specifically tailored in your region. Currently, we have over 8,400 student users and their supporters on I'm First. And what's unique about the student database is that it is filterable. And so you're able to narrow down who those students are by state and by region. And then once you narrow down uh, the number, the amount of students that you want to get in touch with, you can then go and save them and then export their information. Another question is, do we have information about levels of student par participation by a region or a state? Um, my colleague, she's phenomenal, her name is Chelsea, she manages all uh, aspects of uh, the benefits of uh, disseminating these tools and resources to students. Um, she holds monthly Google Hangouts. She has a newsletter that reaches students across the US. Um, we manage that question and answer platform, which I uh, briefly mentioned in the presentation where students are coming to. And so it's, it's, we don't have a target of students by each state because our students range across the national level. But we are able to uh, know where each student is coming from. Yeah, I would just add to that that you know we we certainly are reaching uh, across the country. I don't know, Krista, if you looked recently uh, at the sign up to to uh, know of the fifty states how many are represented in our our student users. Uh, I'd be curious to, to look at the latest figure there. Um, but certainly, you know, tr historically, our our participation uh, mirrors the the population uh, uh, density across the country. So, you know, where there are more people, we tend to have more uh, users participating. Um, and where there are more uh, school counselors and, and college access programs to, for us to be uh, outreaching to. Um, but if your institution is in, uh, you know a non-traditional uh, location or, or an area where we haven't built uh, all that much traction yet um, because we're, we're still relatively new kids on the block and, and, and working to, to, to spread the word and, and raise awareness and drive participation. We really want to welcome those institutions into our partnership and work with you to, to disseminate our information to the high schools and the community organizations uh, in your traditional recruitment geographies. Uh, the guidebook distribution is a great first step in that direction to ensure that uh, our book and, and our programs are put on the radar screen of, uh, of the, the schools and, and youth serving organizations that you want to make sure uh, it's reaching. Um, and we, we recognize your institution as the sponsor of, of this guidebook uh, in that distribution. Um, but beyond that, we want to uh, work hand in hand with you to make sure that, that we can uh, connect with uh, the, the school counselors and, and the other uh, supporters in your state or in your region uh, to make sure that we are effectively marketing and, and reaching uh, everybody who, who can and, and should be benefiting from our program. Okay, we'll give it a few more minutes if you guys have any uh, last minute questions that you'd like to ask. And if you uh, don't want to ask it here, you can see my email and my contact information at the bottom. Shoot me an email, Krista, at imfirst.org, and I'm happy to connect with you further, uh, whether it's through email or by phone. Great. Yeah, we'll be following up um, with uh, hopefully the recording of this webinar, um, some, some helpful next steps and links, a reminder that we've extended uh, the deadline um, for applications to June 13th. Um, so you have a little bit more time um, to complete the application. Uh, but the sooner we can get it in, the better, so we can schedule uh, the follow-up phone interview um, sometime in June, uh, and then uh, hope to initiate uh, the partnership, the new partnerships with you guys, effective July 1st. Great. Thank you so much.
Great. Krista, if there's no more questions, um, we really appreciate uh, your time again.